Hi friends, today I want to talk about a few photos that I have created and how I went about creating those photos. We will be touching on ideas such as introducing intensity into an image, as well as how one can split up segments of an image, as well as how I handled a difficult photographic situation in terms of framing and light. Here's the first photo I want to take a look at today. Fun fact about Zambonis at ice rinks, whenever I see them, I become giddy like a little girl. I run down and take photos. And sometimes they turn out nicely and sometimes they don't. This one I'm actually really happy with. I learned in this most recent trip to an ice skating rink that it seems like it's a good place for a photo mission because I, it didn't seem like there was much of a barrier to entry to being there. <laughs> now, I, your ice skating rink may be different, but it seems like they tend to be universal in the, the experience that you'll have at an ice skating rink. You go there, you skate for a little bit. At 8 p.m., the lights turn off and you have the the colorful lights. Billie Jean plays. Uh, you have you have groups of teenage girls making friendship chains. I just realized I never had friends to make a friendship chain with me at an ice skating rink. Carry on. It seems like a good place for a photo mission. So I would encourage you to maybe give that a shot. I'm going to do this soon. Uh, I think it would be a good place for a photo walk and I will take my full frame camera and long lens. Now I would encourage you if you decided to do this to grow out a mustache, get some thick glasses, like 70s glasses with warm t you know, toned lenses, take a camera and a long lens and take photos of children exclusively. I looked up the definition for ice skating rink, and this was interesting to me. An ice rink is a frozen body of water and or hardened chemicals where people, hold on, hardened chemicals. What does that mean? The more I live on this earth, the more confused I get. This photo was taken with my iPhone. I was at a party, so I did not have my, you know, full sort of camera set up with me. So I took it with what I had. Uh, I think, so one of the things I love about this photo is the straightness and symmetry of it. And I leveraged the, the symmetry of the building, the geometric symmetry of the building itself. And so we have these, you know, the, the, the girders and then the lights in sort of a pattern of twos. And the flags across the top, which really adds a lot to the photo, the flags seem to feel like they're they're coming out of the top of the frame, which works really well. One of the way I added some intensity to this image and, and the feeling of motion is by using motion blur. Now, the iPhone likes to do this in, in any situation where you're not outside. <laughs> it likes to drop down the shutter speed to introduce more light into the scene. And sometimes this is a bad thing, sometimes this is a good thing. In this case, it was a very good thing. Another thing that I did to introduce some intensity into the scene was uh, I put the Zamboni very close to the bottom, to us in general, but also close to the bo the bottom of the frame, and uh, so you see that the Zamboni is almost touching at certain points. Actually, is touching at some points. It, this is a, a sort of a scary technique to embark on. It can go horribly wrong, but it worked well here. And I forget if I cropped it this way or if I shot it this way. You can do either one, obviously. Uh, but nothing pokes into the the sides of the frames, uh, the sides of the frame in a weird fashion. And everything feels very, um, very thoughtfully composed here, and uh, I like the way that it turned out. Another thing that I did here that I've been doing with my photos recently that are taken in cold environments are uh, I drop the tones very cold in terms of post processing, and I add some red to the shadows. I think I just had a stroke. I add some red to the shadows. And uh, I've been mentioning this lately. I've been doing this lately. This seems, th this is a good way to create some contrast, some pleasing contrast in the scene, just as the way you would with a scene with warm and cool tones. You bounce those off of each other. It's very pleasing. So uh, that's, I, I really enjoy doing that with my colder photos. Here's the next photo I want to take a look at. This one was also taken with an iPhone. This one was taken yesterday on a mountain. Me and my wife went out on an excursion. We're at like 6,000 feet here. It was very cold. And uh, so that is why the post-processing is so cold. And once again, you see these uh, red shadows being used in, a, in a, a subtle but pronounced way. Now, I forget if I said this, but I took this with my iPhone. 
And the photo is, is split in half in a 45 degree angle, both in terms of lighting and in terms of, of the environment and the, the geometry of the scene. And I think this is very pleasing. This is a strength for the photo. The light also beautifully separates her from the background, her the subject of the scene, and the snow around her from the background. There's this beautiful interplay of light and shadow happening in the scene that I love. Uh, in the background, you have splashes of light across the valley, and then these streaks of light coming up the side of the hill. And I also appreciate how the, the places where her feet uh, were go or where our feet were going, and where those who have gone before us, the great pioneers, uh, there's shadows in those little pockets, and that, that's a little thing that adds a lot to the photo. Skin tones are nice. And uh, one more thing is that I edited this photo in Lightroom Mobile, which is something that I, I never did before yesterday, <laughs> because Lightroom Mobile has not been a fantastic app for editing photos, in my opinion, but they introduced, at least to the best of my knowledge, I never could find it before, they introduced tone curves, which I use vigorously in my photo editing. And uh, this is a big deal to me. And I, so I edited this photo. With that, the one thing that I would love for Lightroom Mobile to integrate soon is the ability to transfer my desktop presets over to my Lightroom Mobile. Then I would delete every other app on my phone, even my calendar app and my to-do list app, and manage my entire life within Lightroom Mobile, and I will give you all of my money, Adobe. Uh, it seems like a great idea. I don't know why it hasn't been implemented yet. If it is implemented, please let me know. It, uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, at least a clear way to do that. Here's the last photo I want to take a look at today. This one was taken last year, not with my iPhone. And the story of this photo is sort of the, the ingenuity and problem solving of us as humans to make our own obstacles to conquer in the name of fun and skill growth, something along those lines. But it was a, it was a challenging compositional situation, this one. And I decided to shoot portrait here. And whenever you find yourself in a challenging compositional situation such as this one, it's a good idea to thoughtfully scout out the scene and look for pleasing compositions. But in the background here, we have nice warm tones around the building. And uh, you can also see the sky, which I think is quite nice. And this is something that my, my full frame camera pulled off well, the ability to handle that light and introduce that into the scene. The main, uh, dare I say, focal point that I want to caress in, with this photo is the artificial light that I added to the scene. These two, uh, I, well, I don't, it was either two or one. I used iPhone flashlights. My wife was holding them off scene. And this is the cool stream of light that you see coming into the bottom of the frame. And it added so much to this image. It would have been completely different without it. This was a dark, open field. And uh, you would not have been able to, th there would not have been a pleasing separation here. You wouldn't have, they would have been basically silhouettes. And the photo would just have not have, <laughs> James is having a stroke. The photo would have not worked. And so I'd encourage you, I, I'm, I'm normally not an artificial light connoisseur. I don't use artificial lighting much. I love to rely on natural lighting, but... This is something that, that, you know, you're carrying around a pretty bright flashlight in your pocket. If you find yourself in a dark situation, um, learn, a, learn a little bit about artificial lighting. It could be an interesting technique to leverage in these sorts of situations. But that is it for this one. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to engage. And if there are any other sort of um, photographic principles that you would like me to touch on specifically with the with the, the videos that I'm making regarding these photo breakdowns, please let me know. If you checked out my shop, that would be awesome. That would make you a neat person. And if you subscribe, that would make you a neat person. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.